Now, I know how intimidating a new technology can be for somebody who's trying to learn, especially if you're a little bit older. And that's why I created this video. I'm going to simplify using this and you're going to find out even though this is a very advanced technology, it is very easy to use and you don't have to be intimidated. You just need to get started. I'm going to share with you everything that you need from signing up for a free account, a whole bunch of use cases to get you started, the steps you need to accelerate your learning some of the pitfalls to avoid. And then finally, I created a PDF and a step-by-step -step guide so that there's no excuse for you to not get started today. I want you to be using it all the time. I want this to become muscle memory for you. I want you to become the best in ChatGPT, and I want you to get started today. And lastly, if you get any value out of this, Please subscribe if you're not subscribed. Please like it. And certainly, please share it with others who need to know how to use ChatGPT. Enjoy the video. First step is sign up for ChatGPT. So go to Google and type in OpenAI. OpenAI is the company that has created ChatGPT. The first thing that's going to come up is OpenAI.com. Click that. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see where it says try ChatGPT. Click that. If you already have an existing account, it's going to bring you right to the ChatGPT account. If you don't, it's going to bring you to this page. You'll have two options. You can create an account of an existing account that you already have to speed up the process. Or you can just add an email address and create it right here. Now, ChatGPT has a free version. So you really have nothing to lose here to try it out. This is what the interface looks like. Very simple, very easy to use. Even though this is such a powerful technology, all you need to do is just ask it anything in the prompt box right here. This is the smartest, most caring, most patient, least judgmental teacher you're ever going to have. And it's also going to be an incredible assistant to you. And all you have to do is just get into the habit of using it. And you're going to find out how useful this technology is for you. Now, my first piece of advice is don't worry about if you're asking the question wrong. There's so many people when they're first getting started, getting hung up on, am I prompting it right? Don't worry about it. Just Ask it questions like you would ask a human. And if you don't get the response that you want, just follow up with another question or another request. It remembers everything that you just asked it. I'm going to share some of the basic use cases that I think you should get started with. But before we do that, I want you to get into the habit of understanding that you have a very smart teacher right in front of you. So we could always start off with just asking it that question. What are some simple use cases to share with a person who is just getting started with learning ChatGPT? So now it's gonna give you a list of ways that you can use it. And as I said, it remembers everything that we talked about before. So if I wanna learn more about everyday assistance, I could just say, give me more detail on the first item. And it's smart enough to know that I'm asking about everyday assistance. Here are some use cases that I use it for that I think you should start off with. But if you need more, all you have to do is ask ChatGPT. The first use case that I want to share with you is probably the way I use it the most. I have ChatGPT edit all my email, all my documents. I've never sounded smarter. I've never communicated more clearly. And I highly recommend that you use ChatGPT the same way. So here's an example of how I have it answer my email. I'll just copy the email that I received from somebody. And this email is suggesting different dates that we meet. So all I do is copy the email over to ChatGPT and then instruct ChatGPT with the prompt, 
answer this with meeting on the seventh. And there you go, just like that. I'll copy that, paste it, send it. Next use case is that it can teach you anything. So if I were to ask it, what is ChatGPT? It's going to give me a description of ChatGPT. Now let's assume that how it responded was still too technical for me. You can just ask it to dumb it down by saying something like, explain it to me as if I'm 12 years old. And it's just going to dumb it down to make it easier. ChatGPT also acts as a search engine. All you have to do, the icon that looks like a little earth, under the prompt box, you click that and it goes into search mode. So it's going to give you the latest information. Now, my wife has a birthday later in the month. And I saw something cool that I think my, my wife would like. Please search the Plantagachi and tell me more about it. Now, ChatGPT is going to search the web. Tell me that the Plantagachi is an AI powered smart planter designed to make plant caring, engaging, and interactive. Gives me a YouTube video. Also, gives me links if I want to check it out. ChatGPT also does a great job at summarizing large PDFs or large documents. When you're ready to turn off the search, you could just click again and search is turned off. ChatGPT is also very good at summarizing large PDFs or large documents, hundreds of pages long, summarize in seconds. All you have to do is click the paper clip, upload, upload your PDF. In this case, I'm uploading a 61 page employee handbook. Press enter. It's going to read the document and it's ready. And I can just ask it to summarize this document for me. And it's going to summarize the information. And now I can ask it any individual questions. Give me all the details on the vacation policy. It's also great for giving you ideas. Give me seven ideas on YouTube videos to create on the topic of ChatGPT. And there you go, it gives you seven. And right on the top, Beginner's Guide to ChatGPT. I wonder where I got this idea. It's also a great image maker. The way that you would ask it to create an image is you just say, create an image of whatever it is that you want. And in this case of a friendly robot teaching a student about ChatGPT, it'll go into image making mode. And there you go. Now ChatGPT also has eyes, so you could take a picture of anything, upload it into ChatGPT, it can review it, and it could help you with whatever it is that you need. So for instance, I opened up my refrigerator door, I took a picture of all the food that's in there. Based on what you see, create some recipes for me. It's going to review everything that's in my refrigerator, my very messy refrigerator, and it's going to give me ideas on what I can make. The cool thing about that is that if you have a plumbing problem, or even if you have a car problem, you could take a picture of the issue, upload that onto ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT to look like a plumber and diagnose this problem for me. It could translate over a hundred different languages. Rewrite those recipes in Spanish. There you go. I could spend hours sharing use cases with you, but the use cases that are going to be customized to you are going to be created by you. And the only way you get to that level where you understand how to use it as effectively as possible is just getting into the habit of using it every day. This is a very powerful technology, but it's very simple to use and it's easy to learn. 
All you have to do is just get started. Now, when we're done with this thread, if I want to start a new chat, all I have to do is go over to the uh, top left corner where it says new chat. You click that and we have a fresh new interface once again. And notice what we have on the left hand side. We have that thread. We have that chat that we just created. If we go back to it, click that. Now we're back. So everything that was said before, ChatGPT remembers. If we want to add to this chat, we can. Or we could now go to our new chat. As you use ChatGPT on a regular basis, you're going to have a whole bunch of chats, a whole bunch of threads on the left-hand side that you can refer to. If you've been using it like me for the last two years, my paid version, this is the free version that I'm sharing with you so that you see what you're going to see. But my paid version, I have two years worth of threads. Now you have options with these threads. If you get too many in there, you can archive them. You could set them aside so that they don't clutter the left-hand side. You could share them with anybody else with ChatGPT. And if it's not named something that you're going to remember, you can rename it so that if you want to refer to it, you can. Now, once you have plenty of chats, if you need to refer back to something, you just hit the magnifying glass. You can search chats and uh, you just put in whatever it is. And since we have only one thread, I'm going to go with ChatGPT since I know we said ChatGPT many times and it's going to pull up that thread. Now that you have a bunch of use cases to get started, let me give you some ChatGPT Accelerator tips. First of all, use it like you currently use Google. And what I mean by that is have it open all the time, similar to how you have Google all the time. You're not thinking about where do I go to search? You're just going right to Google. That's the mindset I want you to have with ChatGPT. So have it open all the time. And again, ask it questions like you would ask a human. This is the smartest, most caring, most patient, non-judgmental teacher you're ever going to have. So just ask it questions. Don't be intimidated by it. Don't worry about if you're prompting it correctly or asking it correctly. Just follow up with additional questions if you don't get the answer that you want. Talk to it like you're talking to another human. And by having it open and using it all the time, I want you to create the habit of asking yourself, can I do this faster? Can I do this easier? Can I do this better with ChatGPT? It's that muscle memory that's going to allow you to begin to go into an automatic mode where you're not even thinking about it anymore. You're just using it correctly all the time. And always remember people first, people last. And what I mean by that is that in order to use this technology correctly, First of all, you want to start with your idea, your voice, then you let ChatGPT speed up the process of creating whatever it is you want, your document, your task, whatever it is. And then before you send it out there into the world, people last. You check it again. You make sure that it, it has your voice consistently flowing through whatever it is that you created. And also you make sure that there are no errors. And then lastly, those documents that used to take hours that are now taking minutes. When you first get started, it feels like you're cheating. This is not cheating. This is smart. This is how everybody's going to be doing business. You're just getting the head start. Now, one other thing I want you to be aware of is what's called AI hallucinations. And what are they? They occur when an artificial intelligence model like ChatGPT generates information that is incorrect, nonsensical, or fabricated despite sounding plausible or confident. This happens with all generative AI, not just ChatGPT. So you got to watch out for AI hallucinations. And why does this happen? This happens because of the generative programming. The way these tools have been programmed is simply this. If there is a lack of information, the programming will kick in and will fill that gap of information with what it believes should be there. And sometimes it gets it wrong. And that is why people first, people last. Whatever you create, check the work. Make sure you get that last edit in before you send it out into the world so that you're avoiding 
any kind of AI hallucinations. Now, lastly, I've created PDFs, chat GPT feature and icon PDFs, all of the features and icons that we discussed are on here, plus more so that when you've quickly passed the beginner stage, you could start trying out some of these other features and icons on ChatGPT. And then finally, if you're struggling with just getting started, I have the step-by-step -step on how to sign up. There are no excuses. There are no excuses. So what I expect you to do after you finish this video, sign up, start using it, use it on a regular basis, and you're going to be smarter because of it. And you're going to find out very quickly that this technology, as advanced as it is, is very simple to use. And you'll quickly catch up and then jump ahead of everybody else. Because even though ChatGPT is two years old, it is still early, ladies and gentlemen. And again, one last reminder, if you like this, if you got anything out of it, please like it. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed. And most importantly, please share this with others who you feel need to learn how to use ChatGPT. Thank you very much. Have a great day.